was just getting ready to remove this person. They finally connected. Can you unmute the person identified as Lander's iPhone and tell me your name? Your name Lander's. Miss Ritter, is this your witness? Those with that the Trina Landers? Yes. Yes. All right. She Can the person? Oh, go ahead, Miss Ritter. I'm sorry, Judge. She's my complaint of witness on van under 835. All right. Can the person on the telephone that said hello, can you please state your name? Miss Priscilla James. Miss James, I'm going to send your device to a breakout room. However, you have to be on video in order to attend court. You have to be on video in order to attend court. Someone will come into okay. that breakout room to speak with you. Okay, so I got to go to Zoom video. Somebody is going to talk to you. Okay. Um, this is case number two, three, four, four, two, five, four, zero, one, the people of the state of Michigan versus Toya Lamar Mayberry. The defendant is charged with one count of assault aggravated. Today is the date set for a final pretrial conference. Appearances, please. For the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people, and I have the complaining witness present in the courtroom. Mr. Williams, uh, stand at the podium and state your name, please. Oh, My name is Steve Williams. I'm sorry, I, I shared the wrong screen. I meant to. All right, Mr. Hill. Brian Hill on behalf of uh, Mr. Mayberry, P68445. And Mr. Mayberry, please unmute and tell the court your name. Uh, Toya Mayberry. What's your middle name, Mr. Mayberry? Lamar, I'm a junior. Thank you. Today is the date set for final pretrial conference, and the matter is scheduled at 919, which indicates to the court that Mr. Mayberry is on the jury trial track and awaiting a jury trial date. Mr. Hill, how do you wish to proceed? Judge, I, I just got retained last night. Ms. Ritter, what's the offer on this? Judge, the offer was attempted aggravated assault. Judge, my client would be uh, inclined to take that offer if the court, um, he is eligible for Haida. Mr. Mayberry, how old are you? 23, be 24 next month. So I would need, obviously, Ms. Ritter's permission uh, to place us under Haida with any of the conditions that she would she wants. Uh, I'm not sure if that's something that Ms. Ritter would be willing to do. Um, I don't know, Ms. Ritter, are you, uh, are you, um, uh, able, Ooh, that's the word I was looking for. I don't know why I got stuck right there. To make that decision right now, or did you need to look into something further with respect to Mr. Mayberry before you accept Mr. Ryan's, uh, Mr. Hill, sorry, Mr. Hill, Mr. Hill's um, offer to plead guilty in exchange for Haida? So Judge, at this time, uh, the people just need a little bit more time only because I have to check um, Mr. Mayberry's criminal history to see if there's anything that'll prevent us from consenting to Haida. All right. So why don't I continue the not guilty plea on behalf of Mr. Mayberry and set the matter for another final pretrial conference. And um, it looks like that November 8th date is a great day because I don't have my docket is currently light that day. Anything further at this time? No, thank you, Judge. Judge, yeah, just that um, obviously if it's a final pretrial, I, I don't, the victim, I don't necessarily want the victim here. So if we're just going to do that. Well, I don't he, wanna... so uh, Mr. What, what was the complainant's name? Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, uh, thank you for appearing today. And uh at the November 8th court date, you are not required to appear. However, as the complaining witness, you may appear if you want to. Um, you have appeared in person. As you can see, we are all on Zoom. If you know how to Zoom and you want to appear, you may appear. 
um, uh, I, I may or may not be live streaming, so I can't necessarily tell you to watch it on YouTube. I'm, I happen to be live streaming today, but uh, I may not live stream that day. So you can zoom in or you can come in person or you don't have to come at all. Uh, if Mr. Mayberry takes a plea, we will set the matter for sentencing where you will again have an opportunity to appear should you choose because um, you have a right to make a victim impact statement to the court if you choose to, okay? Yes. All right. Uh, so we are all set for November 8th at 919. If you have any questions about anything I've said, you can contact the victim's advocate or Ms. Ritter, the prosecutor, um, sir. Everybody have a great day and stay safe. Take care, Judge. Thank you, Ms. Ritter. You're welcome. Mr. Wilson, unmute your device, sir, and state your uh, full name for the court. Tony Terrell Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Today is the day set for final pretrial conference, and this matter is scheduled at 9-10. That indicates to the court that Mr. Wilson should have a trial on my docket. Oh. Yes, Judge. October, um, I forgot the date. I just had a Ninth, thank you. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. October 9th. Um, a jury trial is scheduled for Mr. Wilson. How are we proceeding? At this time, we're proceeding to the jury trial scheduled for 1030 on October 9th. Ms. Ritter, are the people ready to proceed? Yes, yeah, so I'm looking at my notes. And I see that the court set this final pre-trial conference. I'll defer to the court that required the complaining witness to be present. However, I don't have any notes as to when the last time the complaining witness was here. Well, let's do this. I'm going to continue the not guilty plea for Mr. Wilson. I'm going to set a final pre-trial conference for October the 6th. That's the Friday before um, the trial. And the complaining witness either needs to appear or the people must confirm that they have been in touch with the witness and the witness is ready to proceed to the Monday, October the 9th trial so that the court will know how to proceed with respect to the jurors who have been summoned. So the court will continue a not guilty plea. Final pretrial is continued to October 6th at 9, 10. And uh, if, if that appearance is of any burden to Mr. Wilson in terms of his job or anything. I don't know what the situation is, but Mr. Wilson's appearance. No hold on. Hold on. Don't do that. Don't do that. I mean, because you could get one. You, you could get one. Because let me say this to you. This is probably why it's always good to exercise your right to remain silent. There are people working in the workforce. Felons, ex-felons, people on probation, parole, people with pending cases, they're working all throughout the workforce. So this case is not keeping you from getting a job. It may have kept you from getting at some jobs, but it is not keeping you from getting a job. Because I know three people right off the top of my head that would hire you. Maybe not with a bad attitude, but they wouldn't care that you have a case pending. So as I was going to say, but since he don't have a job and says he can't find one, then his I got one. I got is, is required and he's going to stop. He's going to stop. He's going to stop. So his appearance is also required. He, he has to be here October 6th too, since he has nothing else to do. Anything further? Nothing. No, Judge, I'm just confirming it's we all appear via Zoom. By Zoom, yes. Thank you, Yes, Judge. by Zoom. All right, you're welcome, and we're all set. Have a great day, and stay safe. You too, Judge. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ritter. 7401, the people of the state of Michigan versus Duran Young. Defendant is charged with one count of assault or assault and battery. Today is the date set for a competency hearing. Appearances, please. For the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. Ms. Stevenson. You're muted. Sorry about that. Janice Stevenson appearing on behalf of Mr. Durand Young. Mr. Young, sir, when you're able to do so, please tell the judge your full name. 
Mr. Young, can you see if the deputy can unmute unmute the device? There we go. Thank you. What's your name, sir? What's your name? The Grand Antonio Young Jr. Thank you, Mr. Young Jr. Today is the day set for a competency hearing, and we have received a competency report from the um, Forensic Center, and that competency report um, is dated August the 17th of 2023. Um, did the people receive the report? The people did receive the report, Your Honor. Did defense receive the report? I have the report, Your Honor. With respect to the report on page one, under opinion, um, the report indicates that it is the opinion of the writer that Mr. Young remains not competent to stand trial at this time, and that um, this competency report is signed by uh, Dr. Shostak, S C H O S T A K. Um, with respect to the report, is there a stipulation to the report on behalf of the people? So stipulated, Your Honor. And with respect to the report, is there a stipulation as to the report on behalf of the defense? Or is Stipula there an objection to the report? No, so stipulate on behalf of Mr. Young, Your Honor. All right, then at this time, the court will find that Mr. Young stands incompetent to stand trial. And therefore, the court is going to adjourn um, Mr. Young's competency. Um, and I believe, I believe Mr. Young has a hearing before Judge Giles in November, did you say, Mr. Flanagan? Yes, Your Honor. Look up the actual date. So I'm going to adjourn for 90 days past his date with Judge Giles because then they will order the competency again from Judge Giles. Your Honor, just for the record, I'm I'm going to move for dismissal of the 93-day misdemeanor in the best interest of justice. I think that at this point, Mr. Young has already been incarcerated. I know he has another case pending, um, but he's already been incarcerated for over the maximum at this point. Ms. Ritter. Ms. Ritter. I'm not agreeing to that, Judge. Okay, we'll say that on the record. I have no. I'm not agreeing to that. Okay. Did you see her just sit there sliding like I'm supposed to read her mind? Yes, I did notice that. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, the people do not agree. Uh, while Mr. Young has been in custody uh, past the statutory maximum for this case, he is actually being held on another case and he's not competent to stand trial at this time. So the court is um, going to deny the motion despite the people's uh, kind of lack of response. <laughs> I'm not agreeing to that. And uh, uh, the court denies the motion and I'm going to set the matter 90 days past November the 15th. Anything further with respect to Mr. Young? Not from the people there. I'm just checking the bond. Um... He should be on a personal bond for me. I, I'm hoping not. Oh, oh it's a hundred dollar ten percent. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm nothing further. All right, then, Mr. Young, you're all set. You have another court date next month with Judge Giles. Okay. I should be. I should be going home. I don't know. You might. I mean, as long as far as I'm concerned, you could go home. But I don't know what Judge Giles has you on bond for. Okay. You said that bond was how much? $100, 10%. $10 on my case. Okay. But I don't know what your bond is on Judge Giles' case, okay? Um, he said something, but I didn't hear him. But, Deputy, we're all set. Mr. Taylor? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you keep uh, leaving the Zoom meeting. I'm, I'm here now, Your Honor. I talked to Mr. Smith. He says that he would prefer to represent himself. So if I could, I, I would be sucking chair with him. He says it's too complex for me to understand, but I would still uh, agree to stay, uh, be sucking chair for him. Okay. Well, um, I don't believe that Mr. Smith 
is um, available, is able to represent himself, counsel. So I'm not going to have him represent himself. Very well, well, yeah, they're, they're looking to bring well, doctors into the situation. I don't need doctors. You don't need the, the people don't need to spend the money on a big court cost because they need a psychological evaluation, whether you order it or not. I don't think it's very feasible. Okay. Well, thank you for your opinion on that, sir. <laughs> Mr. Um, Taylor? Yes. Uh, all right. We're going to go on the record of the matter of the state of Michigan versus Kevin Smith, 231353. And, uh, uh, um, God, does this have anything to do with the military? Hold on, sir. Just one moment. Mr. Taylor, your appearance, please. Okay. Good, good morning, Your Honor. Edward Taylor, 57166, appearing on behalf of Mr. Smith. Uh, Mr. Smith, would you introduce yourself to the court, please? Excuse me, I can't hear you that well. Would you oh, introduce Mr. yourself Smith. to the court, Mr. Oh, Smith? My name is Kevin Francis Smith. Okay, thank I you, Mr. Born. Taylor. Mr. Taylor, Mr. Taylor, please, if you can stop walking around and just stay in one spot. Thank you. Very well. Thank you. Uh, uh, today's the date is scheduled for a probable cause conference in this matter. And, counsel, you had an opportunity to speak to Mr. Smith, correct? I did. Would you like me to state my name again so you can hear it? Not nobody's you talking. Sure can. You sure can. I love to say it when nobody's talking. My name is Kevin All Francis. Right. My name is Kevin Francis Smith. I was born May 11, 1966. My social security number is 04. No, 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 no
Okay. Very well, Yana. I will. So for a psyche valve and criminal, you want psyche valve and uh, Did you know my Jeep was run off the road? They're, they're, they're stealing my cars on me. Hold on, sir. Hold on. You didn't want me to interrupt you? Please do not interrupt me. Just one moment. Okay? Of course. Go ahead, Your Honor. Ms. Mr. Smith, I'm sorry, Mr. Taylor, are you asking for competency and criminal responsibility? Uh, I believe so, yes. That would be good, Your Honor. Do they know who the criminal is? All right, <clears throat> sir, as of now, you're the one that's charged with this matter. And <coughs> is the charge piracy? Piracy? No, it's stolen property and habitual offender second offense notice. What did they steal from me? Sir, it's alleged that you stole property, and I will tell you what it is. Um, it's alleged that you stole a box truck from. And the, the maker of that truck is Mac. Do you know I, I, I may be the owner of Mac Corporation and he no, stole sir, the truck it, from me? It's alleged that you stole it from Dillgard Frozen Foods in that's, Fort Wayne, That's Indiana. not homemade. We're talking about Mac. What about Mac Corporation? Is there a representative for, for him that will take responsibility? And who made that truck? The, the design of that truck? Well, as of now, they are not here, sir. So, <clears throat> but we're going to, and I'm going to indicate bond and conditions are continuing. Can we get a continuance? Oh, we're going to get continuance, sir. Yes, we are. Bond and conditions are continued. You're referred for competency evaluation, criminal responsibility. The court will sign that order upon receipt. Thank you. Have Thank a good you, day. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Hi. Good morning, Your Honor. Your Honor, John Goldcourt, P30758, on behalf of Ms. Parsons on both matters. All right, thank you, Ms. Parsons. Your name, please. Jill Mary Parsons. Jill Mary Parsons. All right, and you can see and hear your attorney, correct? Yes. Okay, so a couple things. 232001 is the date scheduled for a pretrial in this matter. We also have a pending matter. <clears throat> Um, on the 231472 that Ms. Parsons was arraigned out county on on June 17th, but failed to appear for her pretrial on June 29th. So, um, <clears throat> counsel? So I'm assuming you're on reading that we do have a uh, arraignment on a pretrial no. on the Right. Oh, no, she was a raid out county on the June 16th matter, and she failed to appear for her pretrial that was set for June 29th. Then she was arrested for the exact same offense on August 17th. I understand her. And, that, and so that's set for pretrial today. Okay. So we have pretrials on both of them. Oh, that's, yes. that's what I thought you yes. yes. Okay, I've discussed this matter with uh, Ms. Parsons. I've also discussed uh, these proceedings with uh, the prosecuting attorney. And at this time, Your Honor, we are asking for a final pretrial uh, dated for approximately two weeks out. Uh, at which time, uh, we're requesting that the complaining witness appear uh, for those proceedings. Why does the complaining witness need to appear? Why can't there be communication with the complaining witness by the prosecuting attorney? Because, Your Honor, the, the issue is whether or not he will actually appear for these proceedings. He can say it all the time, but it's my understanding, at least on this information, that those are the reasons why we are requesting uh, the adjournment for a final pretrial. Well, I, I understand that. But again, that doesn't answer my question. Why does Mr. Why do we need to have the victim in this matter appear in person? For a final pretrial, when there can just be simple communication between the prosecuting attorney and Mr. Uh, Parsons. Because it's my understanding, at least, Your Honor, that he has made these claims that he's not going to appear. Hey, I know what he said. I, I understand he's spoken to the victim's advocate. Uh, we've discussed the possible resolution. Who, who has he made these statements he's not going to appear to? The victim's advocate? 
Well, my understanding is that he's told everybody that he's not going to appear. Who's everybody? Well, first of all, he's told her on a number of occasions. When? Before, between the arraignment on the, between the arraignment on the first matter and the second matter. And then, because it's our position that he has now made these other allegations, so she ends up in jail. I'm just making that statement. You know. And I know we were here. I did the hearing on the second case. We're requesting a final pretrial uh, set for two weeks out with the pre with the victim. Okay. Well, the first charge was dismissed. In June, alleges that she retrieved a grilling fork and attempted to stab Mr. Parsons with it, and then also kicked, punched, and slapped him several times. I understand that. With her daughter stepping in between, that's alleged. I understand that. Okay. Then it's alleged <clears throat> that the most recent. allegation is that he was cut several times with an unknown object, struck with a phone cord, it's unless she broke the chair that he put in front of the door. I understand the allegation, John. That's why she's on a $25,000, among other reasons, $25,000. Mr. Shazra, um, jump in here, please. Thank you, Mr. Shadner. If you could please place your um, appearance on the record. Good morning, Your Honor. Omar Shadner on behalf of the people, PH6332. Okay, thank you. And so, uh, Mr. Um, Popaw is requesting the presence of Mr. Parsons at the uh, final pretrial. And so, my question for Mr. Popaw, and I'm not sure if I was able to get an answer, as to why do we require the complaining witness to appear as opposed to having communication with yourself have you had communication with mr parsons that is correct judge myself as well as the victim have, have reached out to the complaining witness he did indicate that he was on board um there was we did have times we weren't able to contact him at one point so we just wanted to make sure that he was going to be present and we we're going to be able to move forward on the map. okay and so you've spoken with mr parsons Correct, Judge. Okay. And Mr. Parsons, based on your representation, wants to move forward. Correct, Judge. Okay. So then, Mr. Gopal, I don't see the need to have the set for front or pretrial to require Mr. Parsons to be present when he doesn't have to be present for a final pretrial. I'm not sure why we would require a victim to appear multiple times or when it's not necessary unless there's more. I mean, if there's going to be a trial, then sir, sure, you have to appear. He's never appeared. Mr. Mr. Parsons, Parsons, please be quiet. Don't interrupt. Um, we're just asking for this final pretrial. I mean, we can always say, well, I need to discover materials, which I can file an order for. However, I believe that uh, at this point in time, this would be a more expeditious matter, expeditious to resolve this matter. We do have a resolution, so long as we are sure he can say it all the time. That I am not requiring the victim to appear on a final pretrial in order for Ms. Parsons to either take a plea or not. I'm not requiring that. Can we adjourn this for a final pretrial so I can have further time to discuss the offers that remain? Yes, for that reason, I will adjourn it. But I'm not requiring the complaining witness to be subpoenaed or nor to be present at a final pretrial. 
We'd only ask then, Your Honor, that if we do appear, that there be confirmation, uh, as they've done previously, that he would proceed. I'm just asking. Absolutely, Judge. We'll be in contact right. with completing with us from now to the next proceeding. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, <clears throat> so the court's going to adjourn. Or no, we're going to set up for a final pretrial. Thank you. Okay, and <clears throat> you said two weeks, counsel. That's sufficient for you to speak uh, with your client and receive the discovery? Yes, sure. Uh, you know, I, I reviewed the materials. So, uh, as far as a discovery order, I don't believe that would be necessary. Okay. So let's set this for a final pretrial at one o'clock on the 21st. You're here that day, counsel. Yes, I am. Okay, so on the 232001, the court's going to continue bond and conditions. And <clears throat> as your client failed to appear on the 231472 matter, the bond that was previously put in place in that matter was a personal bond. And she failed to appear, which is one reason why the court set the $25,000 temper set bond along with the allegations. And so on that matter, the court's going to indicate a $10,000 10 percent bond with the same conditions as 232001. And it's the same defendant with the same allegations. Anything else, counsel? No, you're right. Uh, Mr. Parsons, I will try to come down and visit you in the Wayne County Jail. Obviously, you know, now an additional 10,000, 10% bond on the first matter. I'll get to see you before the 21st. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. I'll be with your staff. Thank you. You as well. <clears throat>